Hello YouTube, thank you for joining me today. I know that you are being very patient with me as I discuss various factors that orbit this George Zimmerman debacle. Well, let me say this, he's not my focus. There are other things that are indirectly or directly tied to this that can affect the American public and has captured my attention. Believe me, I know there are many other things to discuss, and I will. There are topics that have grabbed my attention and that I have dedicated a lot of time to, such as the radiation threat from Fukushima, Big Pharma, Cancer Research, the TSA, Jesuits, addiction, what some have lovingly referred to as the New World Order, etc. Recently, my flow has just been interrupted because I felt the need to speak and hopefully present something worthy of your consideration. This said, I do not like to give fuel to certain activity. Despite the worthiness of certain issues, you know something is up. You know something is up when the media puts a great deal of focus on one event. Frequently, this is an indication that opportunists of the worst sort are using these times to commit massive financial crimes, create diversions, sign executive orders, and pass various laws that will stab us in the back repeatedly, drain us of our life's blood, and probably eradicate the Bill of Rights and the Constitution if it could. This occurs while the world is still willing to pay admission for cheap entertainment. No matter your personal opinions about Jesse Jackson, I have to wonder what was he thinking. Before we go further, do know I am not here to entertain your accusations about him being a race pimp, etc. I disagree with various activities he has been a part of and certain comments made by him over the years. I also acknowledge the good he has done, so I will not throw him under the bus. This does not mean his actions gets a reprieve. Many of you, I am sure, have heard he has taken action several days ago. He desires a national investigation of the racial context that led to Trayvon Martin's slaying. He states, quote, and it is time to call on the United Nations Human Rights Commission for an in-depth investigation of whether the U.S. is upholding its obligations under international human rights laws and treaties, end quote. Some would say the only reason Mr. Jackson is doing this is to interject himself into this social theater. I am not sure. I'm not going to lie, he may be, but I don't know for certain. I do agree in part with the HRC, otherwise known as the Human Rights Commission, when they addressed proportionality and necessity. This is not because I uh, find favor with the HRC, but because I find favor with this particular facet of their reasoning. That would be, there is a general duty to avoid the use of force where nonviolent means of self-protection are reasonably available. Of course, the crux, in my opinion, is the interpretation of reasonably available. This I only agree with if one is outside of their car or home. However, I have never been a supporter of the United Nations nor do I reason for one moment that its wish to use international sanctions against nations which do not enforce laws against intolerance is in our best interest. I know that sounds weird coming from me, but this is how I see things. This said, I was against the signing of the Federal Hate Crimes Bill, H.R. 1913. Also, I am suspect of the ADL's influence due to its contribution and authorship of the bill. I give you this background because I want you to know where I am coming from. I really want you to understand my background here. This said, eventually, I reason the supposed hate crimes would move us towards thought crimes. My reasoning is the Hate crimes road leads to a precedent of pushing motivations rather than actions. 
It cannot punish the actions you see, for the actions themselves are already illegal. Since it's passing, it still appears we were recipients of an artful deceit, a well-crafted artful deceit. Our failure to see past the fast talk and emotion brought us all to a place where the government becomes justified to probe way, way beyond motive. So, though I am opposed to the verdict, I definitely think the Department of Justice pursuit of a hate crime is unwise, because I am looking at the bigger picture. Why would Jesse want to involve the UN? Human Rights Division. I am speaking of the Human Rights Council again. If you do a little checking regarding the HRC, it does appear there are several accusations that there are Iranian and Syrian reports that state that their activity lacks credibility. Their activity, which is represented within their reports. Surely Jesse knows this. Jesse's actions, I must admit, speaks very clearly. It tells the American public he thinks the UN should have authority over America. You may say I am way, way off base, that I just don't see this for the way that it is, and maybe you are right. I am not going to say that I am all-knowing, and I am not going to say that I can't make mistakes. I do so often. It appears Jesse is doing his part to use this grave event that we have heard plenty about and that will haunt the American dream, haunt the American image, haunt us because it brings to light the reality of America. Well, this grave event is definitely now being used, if it hasn't been used since its genesis, as a globalist instrument in order to achieve greater power. Do you get that? And you may want to consider, because I indirectly said it, so let me directly say it. You must consider the possibility that what Jesse is doing is not what you think he is doing. That maybe, just maybe, he is working with certain elites in order to condition us meaning anybody who sees an injustice in law, to seek out globalist power. Jesse's actions shows me that he believes ultimately that mankind's problems can no longer be solved by national governments. What do you think? Thank you for listening.